Hello everybody, Max Scoville and Zach Miner here for Rev3 Games, and we want to talk to you about XCOM Enemy Unknown, which is a mysterious game and we don't know anything about it, because the enemies are all unknown. That's not true, actually. We know, we know, we know a lot we about actually, the enemies. We played it. We played the game. We know a bunch about the game. Yeah, we've actually we've been talking about this for several months now, um, but just last week we got our first hands-on, our first look at the game's multiplayer, right? Yeah, which is which is a new, a new thing for the game. Right. Traditionally, it's been single-player only. And it's it's a pretty good fit. Yeah, it's uh, it's totally separate from the single player, which is kind of refreshing. It seems like a lot of like a lot of games are trying to talk up like oh like you know the multiplayer is tied into the single player, and I don't really want that. You know, yeah. they're they're two different experiences. It seems like Firaxis is treading really carefully because they know they've got a lot of older hardcore fans who probably mm -hmm. don't want multiplayer integration with their campaign. So it's just, right. This is a fun thing. It's pretty much taking all the all the nuts and bolts of the game and just throwing them at, at people. And it's like here, just you can you can uh, make your squad uh, of up to six people with, uh, you know, both both XCOM operatives and aliens, yeah. which is the first time you can play as aliens. Right. It's it's, cool. it's not it's not humans versus aliens. You can mix you can make your team of whoever you want. So the way it works is basically there are kind of two main parameters that you set when you go into a game, and that is the turn time, which is how long you have to make all your moves, and then how many points you have. And the way the point system works is essentially, like you were saying, you have six slots that you can fill up, uh, and so you can pick from either a soldier and a different soldier specialization, or several different types of aliens, each have their own ability. There's a lot of strategy there because we, we played a couple different games. We played one that had the highest point threshold, which, which was 20,000. Yeah, I mean, you're basically budgeted this, these points. Right. And, um, for, for an XCOM operative, you basically pick like soldier, and then you go down to their class, which is like sniper, uh, you know, sniper, assault, assault heavy, heavy, stuff yeah. like that. And then in each one of those, there's like separate separate perks. So it, it becomes like a very you, you specialize your dude, and everything costs like a little bit more. It's like you know, it's like customizing a, a computer on a, a you know PC cyber power or whatever. Um, you know, you're just you're putting in different different components. I'm trying to right. appeal the PC gamers here. Okay. Uh, but no, it's like you know, you're adding stuff. You're like, oh, I want him to have a sniper rifle, and it's like, oh, what if I have a like a plasma rifle instead? That's like more powerful. So right. Add some points. Meanwhile, all the aliens are just like flat rate. Adjusting sight. The photo is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, that's another thing. Um, in the game, you, you got uh, flying, which is a. It's not just you know, a flat kind of grid-based system. No, several uh, different yeah. levels. Uh, there's also the Thin Man, um, which when it when the Thin Man dies, he kind of like lets out this kind of poisonous gas that uh, can infect your guys. I like um, him because he's just wearing a suit. Yeah. yeah. The other guys are like, oh, hey, it's like a floating robot torso with lasers on it. He's like, I'm a creepy looking guy in a suit with a, with a laser gun, you know? Maybe influenced by Half-Life a little bit. Um, there's also the Berserker, which I really like, which is like this huge melee guy, um, and he can you can tell him to like run into walls and blow stuff up. And like you were saying, once you start, there's this fog of war that's over the entire map. So you, there's this kind of this sort of suspense of like where are they? You don't know where they are on the map. They could be coming from any direction. Right. Uh, it's the camera controls are great. You just hit the D-pad uh, left or right on Xbox and just flips it. Kind of you know still isometric, but you can kind of flip around, and get a sense of that, and you know you can pan the camera around and see what the what's going on. But if your uh, if your enemy is is not in range, you don't know where they are. So a lot of a lot of the early gameplay is kind of positioning your guys so that they're undercover. They have good line of sight. Um, and that you are, you know, prepared to not get flanked or anything. So basically, you have kind of two moves that you can do in each turn. You can move and then you can shoot, or you can move outside of that typical move range, which is called dashing. Um, this is kind of what you want to do at the start of the game, but the downside is that once you dash somewhere, you're in a better position, but you can't shoot anyone. Once you spot your guys, you can actually, um, you know, start firing at them. And the, the way that you do that is you kind of pull on the trigger and it enters an over-the-shoulder mode, and you can kind of pick from different abilities. The sectoids have this kind of mind meld, which can be used uh, in conjunction with the soldier, which can be powerful. And depending on the cover that your enemies are in, you have a certain percentage to hit, right? Sometimes it's like, yeah. you know, it can be something like 70% if you've got a good angle on them, or 20%. And, and there's all these other things you can do, um, like there's overwatch mode that you can put your guys in, which basically means like, say I've got two guys positioned uh, and they're covering both entrances of a bar. I put them on Overwatch, so if one of your guys tries to run into the bar, we'll just shoot automatically. Yeah. And then that can be countered with even more like abilities on your side, where if you have a reflex ability, that means that you will not get hit by any Overwatch. But again, that's going to cost you a ton of points at the outset. Uh, the one thing to note is that all the environments are destructible in the game, which is pretty cool. The environment does play a role. 
Uh, Zach was hiding behind a cop car, and I shot at him a whole bunch, and the cop car sort of caught fire. And I was like, oh, I didn't kill him. And then I think a turn passed and the cop car blew up. And yeah. this dude died. And I was like, all right, I can get behind that. So as you guys can probably tell, there's a ton to talk about with the multiplayer of this game. And we really liked it. Yeah, we haven't really scratched the surface of the single player. So. No. Uh, talk about. Yeah, definitely. If you guys have any questions about the multiplayer, leave them in the comments below and Max and I will uh, answer your questions. Yes. And be sure you're subscribed right here on youtube.com slash rub3games because we're going to PAX next week we and are. we're going to be playing some more of we XCOM. We are probably going to put up some more videos about video games on this channel. Lots also more. on youtube.com slash detoid, which, uh, yeah, PAX is in a week. Just, just get, get hyped because the enemies are unknown and they're aliens and they're everywhere. And we'll see you guys around. Bye.